hello everyone and welcome to my channel welcome to this oh so i'm just going we're starting today with throne room tuesday but for those of you who do not know my name is sheila rollins and i am the founder of shula ministries entertainment and associates inc and on this youtube we are Overcomers Anonymous, where we support anyone designed to overcome anything. And we do it with Jesus Christ being a higher power and also with him, what he accomplished for us on the cross. Therefore, our wholeness, our forgiveness, our cleanliness, our completeness, the things that we thought were impossible becomes possible with Jesus Christ being our higher power. But however, in order for us to take full advantage of all that he's offering, we must be obedient to his word. And I encourage the King James Version because when I asked him which one to base my Christianity on, he told me King James. And also the Ten Commandments, where he also admonishes us to keep the seventh day Sabbath. These things are binded on us in the description next to the title, that arrow. All this information is in there. Okay, so basically, I know that I told you that I was going to do um, leveling up this week. But however, I decided to kind of go back a little bit and talk about some earthly experiences that we had um, that has gotten in the way in times past of us leveling up, okay? And possibly like why that has happened. And so on my other YouTube, which is The Pursuit to Christ, I talked about um, basically our earthly experience. And I did what I call a roll call. And I had everybody stand up. And basically, I I basically um, called off a bunch of disgusting earthly experiences, which within themselves basically lets us know why everybody is celebrate Christmas and, you know, the birth of Jesus and all those different things. Okay. Basically, it had, basically lets us know why Jesus had to come in the first place, you know, because of how sin had impacted our lives, you know, our dealing with depression because of us being traumatized and just a whole lot of different things, you know. And so I did that roll call. You might want to go over there and check that out. You know, so YouTube's all together on this one. I'll be sharing a lot of my experience, maybe some other people's experiences of some things that they've experienced and why and how Jesus fit in their life and helped them to overcome or to help them to be overcoming those particular things. Because there's some things that I've overcome, but then there's some things that I'm still overcoming. And then there's some things, and you too, that we are not going to overcome. And these things won't be changed until Jesus comes. But he said, the just shall live by faith. And he that endure to the end shall be saved. Because sometimes I believe that some of the things that we're struggling with keeps us closer to Christ. And if we didn't have those things, we wouldn't be close to Christ. We wouldn't call on him. We'd probably ignore him. Okay, but because it's like Paul with the thorn in the flesh, he asked Jesus three times to take it away. Jesus said, no, 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 my grace is sufficient. And so basically he had to live with those things. And as a result, it didn't stop him at all. He continued on with the work that God had for him. But however, I believe that it helped him to stay close to God because he had to call on God, you know, relieve me from this pain or whatever it was that he was experiencing. And so the same things with us, you know, so while, you know, Christ has come to deliver us, give us beauty for ashes for the things that we've experienced on this earth, there's some things that we're not going to be delivered from until he comes. And the Bible says, in a moment, in the twinkling of the eye, that this mortal should put on immortality. Okay, so it's in that part right there that I'm talking about that we're going to be changed when Christ comes. We don't know which part that is. We don't know who that's going to be, you know, whatever. But I think that some of us, some of all of us may have something that we need that's going to be, you know, keep us close to Christ. So, okay, so, um, so, all right, so that's my little introduction. So, like I said already, that we're starting with throne room. Tuesday. And so basically in Throne Room Tuesday, 
I usually put something in the throne room soliciting your prayer. And I'm going to tell you, partly the reason why I stand today is because of your prayers. And I appreciate that. And thank you also for, for viewing. I appreciate that too. And like constantly coming back, you know, whether you talk to me, leave a comment, show likes or whatever, I appreciate you viewing. And also too, remember that when you like the, the video, YouTube will show it to other people so that if whatever help that's necessary that they may need, that they can get the help, okay? And also remember to... Um, check out the ads the ads are the things that you know people that the sponsors they pay for youtube and it makes it possible that you can get it for free so if you can't do anything else watch the ad okay so i thank you for that so okay so let us go on so when i put the things in um when i did the introduction rather in pursuit to christ channel um you know basically i talked about like our earthly experience and if none of these things has happened to you then you can sit down but however i think that while they were humiliating and humbling that it lets us know that we're not by ourselves. and even though satan try to make us think that we're the only ones that's been molested we're the only one that's been raped we're the only one that's been pissed on spat on threw up on whipped cursed out or whatever the situation is on this earth abandoned you know placed in foster care abandoned by our parents that you, you came from a house where your parents was broke up whatever the situation is satan makes us think you're the only one and it was your fault in some kind of way. If you didn't wear that, you didn't would have never been raped. You know, if you wasn't so beautiful, so cute, or whatever, you know, you would have never been exploited, you know. Um, and so a lot of times, because of our experience, instead of looking at maybe the person that did these things to us as being out of sync with God, sick. Um, needing Jesus, needing healing, and all those things. We look at ourselves and we ask why. Like, what did we do? But however, I am of the mind that God has sanctified us and ordained us for something. And possibly as we give those things back to God, whatever it is that you're struggling with, and so God basically says that he would give us beauty for ashes. And rest assured, whatever it is that you have gone through on this earth, okay, you don't need to hang your head in shame. You don't need to blame yourself. You don't need to beat yourself up. You don't need to self-medicate because Jesus has a remedy. He wants us to cast our cares on him. And when we cast our cares on him, we have peace. We have joy. You know, we have happiness. We have forgiveness. Because, and I say forgiveness because while we should not take matters in our hand as far as taking vengeance on a person because of what they've done, God's got that all in check. Because the Bible says that when a person does things to us, they're messing with the apple of God's eye. And then he said, when he messed with all his children, it'd be better that you go drown yourself, you know, with, a, uh, you know, I forgot what the text says, but um, basically, like, basically that you kill yourself because, you know, God will take care of that part. But the part that I want to focus on in this video is us taking up ourselves and being mommy and daddy to us, you know, where we may have complained, you know, you've been traumatizing, you know, your mother, your father didn't know, or they didn't know how to handle it. And they treated you harshly as a result of your behavior when you needed a little bit more patience, a little bit more love and kindness and acceptance. You know, you didn't get that. You got harshness and, you know, um, you know, we may have to get the forgiveness from God and, you know, give it to a parent that did the best that they could. You know, I know I can say that on the things that has happened to my children, even at my own hand, it wasn't because I hated them. You know, it wasn't because I didn't love them. You know, I can give myself an 85 for just trying, for just being there. And basically, on the things that I knew to do, like applying those, the things that I didn't, you know, I have to 
cast those things on God that and somehow or another he will make them out for their good you know and so like I said this video is going to be focused on us healing and hopefully it's like it's something that I can say you know as I share my experience as I'm vulnerable here um you know as I be um an open book here that it may be some takeaway you know that like helps you but however if you don't get anything else I want you to get that there's a remedy for your suffering and that is why Jesus came. And that we don't have a high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our uh, infirmities. You know, the Bible says that basically whatever he feels, we felt too. You know, and as a matter of fact, I would even venture in to say that because we're created by him, because he loved us so much that when he created us, he created us in his image. You know, we bear the image of God. We belong to him. When somebody messes with him, with us rather, I'm sorry, and we feel that way too, we become close to Christ. But when somebody messes with us, it's like messing with Christ. And what comes to mind is the Bible talks about when, when Christ comes and it says that, you know, it acknowledges him as the king and that on the right side of the king is going to be the righteous and on the left side is going to be the unrighteous. And so basically it says that to the, to the righteous, he's going to say, come, Blessed of my father, when I was hungry, you gave me meat, which is food. When I was thirsty, you gave me drink. When I was in prison, you came to visit me. And the person's like, like, what did I do that? And he said, as you do it to the least of my brethren, you do it to me. And so that's why I say that the things that happens to us, it's as if, it is happening to Christ himself, okay? And so where it says that, you know, we don't have a high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, like infirmities, like sickness, the things that we experience on this earth, rape, you know, molestation, uh, 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 what is it, um, beastology, you know, people were forced to, you know, lay with animals, um, sodomy, you know, just a whole lot of different things. Christ felt that. You know, in the same way, let me prove it to you. In the same way, if somebody does something to your child, another child does something to your child, tell me it hasn't been the times you felt like putting on boxing gloves to fight that child yourself. Or if another person does something to your siblings, you know, your nieces or your nephew, your children, you feel like dealing with it yourself. It's the same thing. You know, Christ has come that we might have life, that we might have it more abundantly. Um, Isaiah 61, it talks about, you know, this great deliverer that we have. So everything that we experience, it is no surprise to Christ. He knew that you were going to be raped. He knew that you were going to be abandoned by your mother, your father, that you were going to grow up in foster care. Whatever the situation is, that you were going to eat out of trash can, he knew everything. And he still ordained us to do a work for him. So as we give those things to him, no matter what it is, it could be something that's not even on the roll call, whatever it is. As we give those things to him, we can accept the life that he has for us. Don't you want to know? Don't you want to experience the life that Christ has, the abundant life that he has for you, I know I do. And so this is the thing that I want us to pray for. And that is for us to lay down everything that we have experienced on this earth, that we have, you know, that we were casted at the cross, you know, that we would lay it down, you know, and that we would take hold of the life that Christ has for us, you know, that we would get the forgiveness for ourselves if we self-medicated, you know, continued on the way that was brought into us, that initially hurt us. 
cause us to hold our head down, brought us to shame and guilt and blame and all those things that we would lift our heads up, you know, and forgive ourselves and forgive the other person. Okay. And, and, and to go on with our life with Christ, you know, and so I'm casting that into the throne room and it's a lot. I know, but God knows. He already knows. And so with our heads bowed, let's just say a prayer. Father, we honor you as being God and we as your creation as well. And Father, we just ask that you would help us to surrender all things that's not like you, that we will meet you in peace, dear God. You know that we won't be on the left side where you say, you know, when I was hungry, you didn't give me any meat. When I was thirsty, you didn't give me a drink. When I was in prison, you didn't come and visit me. That you would cast us out into outer darkness, into the lake of fire. But help us, Father, to be wise, you know, not for fear, but for love. And that we will look for a better life. And that life is in you. So, Lord, I'm just asking that you would help us, dear Jesus. You know, help us to tell others, help us to enjoy our life moment by moment. You know, sometimes it's a daily battle, Lord, that we have to call on you. But moment by moment, we just ask that you would help us to keep still, that we would not continue on in that word, that uh, way that we've been going that has brought us so much shame and so much pain. You know, but Lord, I'm just asking that you would just, you know, forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness and help us, Father, to know that we have forgiveness, we have deliverance, we have completeness, we have acceptance, and it's all in you. These prayers we ask in the loving name of Jesus. Amen. And so basically, um, okay, so um, I already talked about check out the ads, the playlist. I have a lot for you. I have comedy. I have you know, a lot of music. I have the, uh, what's possible in vegan eating, relationships, um, you know, a series about relationships. I have a lot in the playlist, so check out the playlist. So, okay, so basically we're going to move from um, Throne Room Tuesday to in the middle of the week, Wednesday, okay? And so basically... Um, in the middle of the week, Wednesday, we deal with the hard stuff of recovery. And I think that one of the hard things that I've had to deal with is that accepting that the ways that I thought that my life would be prosperous, that would bring me love and joy and peace and all those different things did not work. For example, um, just the whole fact of like, my parents being separated when I was a kid, um, I felt like in some way that, well, Satan told me basically it was my fault. And so as a result of that, um, I was trying to figure out what I had done, basically what I had done. And so I wanted to show my father, who had left the home and my mother went to work, I wanted to show my father that I could do stuff. So when I learned how to tie shoes, I wanted to show him. He told me, show him those title shoes. He used to call me Pete and Squirt. Don't tie those shoes. Well, I tied his shoes anyway because I said, well, you know, the joy that he's going to feel, the happiness of the proud of me, how he's going to feel is going to override my disobedience. But it didn't. And so just like that did not work, it was many things like in relationships, like how, you know, I wanted to show people how good, you know, I was and all those different things that believing that I had done something so bad that caused my father to leave, my parents to break up. And it was just a lie. But that kind of went through my, my, my life, you know. And so basically, as I got into like my male and female relationships, you know, I had preferred a guy that was unavailable because that matched my father not living with me. And as a result, I wanted to cast all my pearls before them. You know, um, yeah, all my goods I wanted to cast before them because I needed them, I thought, to say to me, you're a good person. You do a lot of good, great things. 
you know, I'm going to stay with you forever and I'm going to love you. But it never happened. And so basically, from one relationship to another, from one guy to another, I did the same thing and it never worked, you know. And so basically, those old scripts that we have in our head, you know, that's so hard to let go, but yet we just keep performing the same things. And it never, it never happens, it never happens. And so basically, in the middle of the week, Wednesday, I like for you to think about the scripts that may be playing in your head that you, in all your life, you were subject to, you know, um, because of some lie that Satan said that this is the way that you had to go. Your father did it. Your mother did it. Your, 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 your whole family is doing it. You know, and so you need to continue to do it too. But yet you are dying. You are suffering in the world that you're trying to live with, you know, like from your, your family, your caregiver or whoever. It is not working. And so basically, um, I just like to encourage you to let go of those old scripts so that those old scripts so that you can take hold of what's in god's word and what it says and we can do all things through christ okay and i like that a whole lot because it lets me know that i'm not on my own and so in the way that you know say the examples that was left for us and you know how a giant was killed it comes what comes to mind is david you know, when he killed Goliath. And so it's ironic that he came as a child and God used him to beat this huge giant, you know, and that was because David trusted in God, you know. And so even though he had, he came with his boy toys, rocks and a slingshot, okay, David had the, the best armor. That did not stop David. Who had the power of God to defeat Goliath. And it's the same thing. Those old scripts, they just keep us in to shame. You know, it keeps us not feeling less about ourselves. So why not let us cast those things on Christ? Believe what his word is saying. Trust in him. And allow, allow yourself to see how God would help you to be overcomers, how God would allow you to be prosperous, you know, where you were not before. And you would have to give the glory to God because you know, you tried a lot of things before and they did not work. And yet this is working. So I encourage you there. So let's, let us move past in the middle of the week, Wednesday. Um, remember the vegan foods, uh, vegan food fundraisers. Okay, they're exactly that. My information is in the description box. Um, veganism has a good rep. You know, so basically research says that it can reverse disease, prevent disease, help us to hold on to uh, those good old youth genes and also encourage longevity. So check it out for a day, for a week, for a month or however the new year is coming. Try it out. Okay, so. All right. Um, so, all right, so in Relationship Thursday, I already talked a little bit about relationships, how relationships went for me. So let me just go a little bit deeper. So while in my life, there was a time where I was trying to figure out um, why my parents weren't together. And, you know, Satan constantly pointing a finger at me, tell it's you, it's you. If you were such a bad girl, rotten person, your parents would be together, your father would be here. Um, so I got to the point where I start to look at my mother and as I looked at my mother to me in one sense, she's perfect. She didn't do everything right, but she was there to make a mistake if one was going to be made. You know what I mean? She was trying to do the best that she can. And now as I look at myself as a parent and, you know, a lot of times the things that we didn't get when we were being parented, 
we try to give it to our kids. And sometimes we can miss the mark as to what the child wants. She was missing a mark on some things with me, but overall, she was doing a great job. So basically, when I looked at my mother and um, how she was, like, I thought she was a household goddess. She kept us really nicely. You know, when I say kept us nicely, uh, she dressed us nicely. You know, she made sure our clothes was clean and stuff. And she worked a lot and all that. And sometimes we were with our older siblings. But overall, mom did a great job. But I was looking at, I didn't want to be like her. Like, for example, I was a small person. I was not just short. I was also skinny. You know, so my mother, my mother never wanted to be skinny. She couldn't do nothing about being short but she didn't ever be skinny. So she would take weight on. And basically this weight on got her so fat, she loved it. Well, remember my focus is on my mom. So while I liked how she decorated our house and kept her house and stuff like that, there was some part of me that was like that too. But the other part of me that was not like my mother, while my mother was not a clutter bug, I became somewhat of a clutter bug because remember, I'm now I'm blaming her. It's your fault and why daddy is not here. So, you know, I'm, I'm a kid. I'm talking from a kid's point of view. And so basically I'm looking at her and said, no, I don't want to be, a, I don't want to be fat, you know, and still even today, I'm not, I'm not into fat, but then I'm finding that, um, my doctor is saying that I need to do something because fat is trying to overtake my, take my body and that my body is losing muscle and gaining fat. But that's about what's going on about everybody with my age. But I can't do nothing about them. I got to do something about me. And I have. So I lost like three pounds since last week. And I got myself checked. And so, you know, my, um, the exercising guy, he's basically said he's not my trainer. I don't have a trainer. But so I just call him exercise guy. He works at the Y. But he said, um, don't, don't be upset. You have gained three pounds of muscle, you know. So, so basically, that was a little spiel there. That was something different. But anyway, so, okay, so I said, okay, well, praise God, because I want to swap it out. And so I've been exercising and stuff. And this is the really the first time in my life where I feel like this is doable. But trust me when I tell you, I have to call on God to exercise. I have to call on God not to eat all day and just and just everything. Just call, constantly calling on God. And so, so, okay, like I said, I'm looking at my mother and she wanted to be fat. I guess when she saw me, she saw herself. She wanted me to be fat. And I wasn't interested because I wasn't trying to be like her because I wanted to. Whatever took daddy away, I wanted to kind of draw my daddy back in. And so then, um, you know, so, okay, to make matters worse. And then when I was about 13 years old, I was raped at about 13. And from that, you know, instead of like, and it did create a lot of trauma for me. But along with the trauma, the guilt, the shame and everything that I felt, I also felt like a light come on. And like voices, like telling me that this is the way that you got to go. Because, you know, I was insecure. I was vulnerable. You know, I need, I felt abandoned. And I felt like, what is Satan was saying to me? And you want love, affection, and attention? That I needed it and I wanted it. That this is the way to do it. Okay. And so basically, for about four decades about four decades, I committed fornication, okay? And so basically, praise be to God, God delivered me from that. But what happened was the life that I was trying to figure out about my dad and the whole thing about me being raped and everything that came with that, um, being kind of isolated and not being able to let anybody in that world because I blame myself in a way. And I didn't know that until like, quite recently that I blame myself because I'm saying, well, if I wasn't there, you know, you know, whatever, you know, I blame myself. But anyway, those two lives or those two circumstances merged. And when they merged, it kind of kept me in. And so while when I would talk to my friends that were doing the same thing, I would laugh. 
But when secretly, when I was secretly and quietly by myself, I would cry. And it was not something that I wanted to do. But however, it separated me from all the adults. And as a result, I couldn't get the help that I needed. And so because I couldn't get the help that I needed, I was left with other kids. What I mean other kids, I mean kids that were doing the same thing that I was doing, you know. And so, um, like I said, I really wanted to reverse it. But see, in reversing it, it was a hard road. But however, again, it took Christ. It took me coming to Christ. It took me constantly leaning on him and just everything about it, that sexual experience, it had to come down. Now, even though I know that the person that raped me was being raped too, okay? Uh, and I forgive them and all that kind of stuff, but this is my story. But it's not, it's not the ending of my story because just like your story, God is changing the ending, you know, uh, where we come from, you know, cannot be changed. But where we going can change if we choose Christ, if we make a different decision, you know. And so basically, um, you know, remember to subscribe, y'all. Remember to subscribe, share the video, encourage subscription because this information is really good. Now, last next week for sure, next week for sure, I'm going to do leveling up. But I just felt like we needed to take a pit stop so that we can be cognizant of why we needed Jesus. You know, that there'd be no mistake in why he had to come and why he had to come as a baby and as a child and pass through everything that we did up until 33 years old when he left here. OK, so um, so basically, so here I am now in my right mind. You know, as far as sexually is concerned and, you know, all the lies that I experienced in the past, because I'm saying, well, shucks, how many cotton picking guys do I have to date or be with, you know, in order for to get the love, the acceptance, the whatever it was I needed, because it never happened, you know? And so the Lord bless that I was able to cast that off. And so now you know that I'm waiting for God now to bring me and my husband together because he promised a husband for me when I didn't even want him, okay? But because God is my father, I accept what he says. So, okay, so let's move into Sabbath Prep Friday. And so basically, you know, I like to take Sabbath Prep Friday and basically pull us apart. And what I mean by that is we're adults now. But however, deep down inside of us, there is a little child that is wanting us to make a different choice so that they can live, so that they can come out of hiding, so that they can feel safe, so that they can feel love and that they can feel acceptance and all those different things. Okay. And so normally on a Sabbath, what we do is like, um, as well as preparing our home our food, our clothing, and everything to celebrate Sabbath, which is the seventh day of the week. Um, we also take a look at ourselves and to make sure that our hope, our trust, and our faith is in God. So if it's any way that we have wavered, any way that we have sinned or anything like that, we take the time to confess us. And not that we don't do that every day or that we don't do it as soon as we ha it happens or whatever. Um, we really do it during that time. So right now, while I'm saying to pull ourselves apart, that little child, the Bible says, to suffer the little children to come to me. In other words, don't keep the little kids back. So you as an adult has to make a choice for that child that's inside of you, or I do too, for the child that's inside of me, that is a well, alive, well, not well so much, but alive, you know, that is in hiding, you know, um, that's been abandoned, that's been molested, that's been raped, that's been, you know, rejected and all those different things. We have to make the choice that first we will accept them. Christ has already accepted us. Satan will never accept us. And so basically, 
As we gather up ourselves, that little self of us, that we would bring him, bring our little person towards Christ. And that we will make sure that the little person in us is safe. Safe because of our choices. Safe because Jesus is the Lord of our lives. Safe because of God's word and us being obedient to his word. And even including the, the fourth commandment where he admonishes us to keep the seventh day Sabbath. These things are binding on us for eternal life, you know. And so um, another part in the Bible, it talks about... Um, Except we receive the kingdom as a little child, that we would no wise receive the kingdom. So we have to come as a little child. And see, this verse has become really, really important to me because it has been the little child inside of me that has taken most of the abuse. Now, a lot of times people say, what are kids worried about? They ain't got no cares. They ain't got to work. They ain't got to do this. But listen, it is a lot of times in childhood where we suffer the, you know, the most uh, sinful things, the most horrible uh, trauma is in childhood, you know. So working, that's an easy thing. If we only had to work, that's an easy thing. But a lot of times we shoulder, you know, a lot of abuses, sexual abuse, verbal abuse, abandonment, and all that in our childhood. And for the most part, we do those things without any help, with no support. But let me tell you something. I'm coming for you. And support is here. And it is in Christ. Make sure that you subscribe. It is in Christ. Okay? So he said, and such is the kingdom of heaven. Like I said already, Christ knew that these things was going to happen to us. And he still wants us to be a part of his kingdom. But however, when we come to him, we're not going to stay that way because those things are plants that Christ has not planted. And the Bible says every plant that Christ has not planted is going to come up. But see, little by little, he's going to bring it up. He's not going to bring it up all at once, but little by little as we come to him. But the thing is, is for us to have our hearts, our minds, our bodies, and our souls towards Christ. Remember that when the children of Israel, the snake was going through the camp, biting the children of Israel, they was killed, dying and stuff. And God told Moses to make a brass and snake and put it up on a cross. I don't have one right now, but put it up on that cross. And as many that was look at that cross, that they should be healed. The same thing with us today. As many of us would turn to Christ, we should be healed. When the Son of Man is lifted up, he will lift us up as well. And we cannot go further than what Christ is willing to go lower to lift us up. So no matter how low that you think that you are in your life, Christ is willing to go even lower to lift you up. And he has. Because the Bible says, you know, uh, basically that it is like... Uh, like a curse or a shame or something. I forgot the word that was used for a person to hang on a tree. And so this is like an example of Christ hanging on that tree and dying for us, opening up the storehouse of heaven, whereby we could become sons and daughters of the most high God and everything that God has. Us having the opportunity to have it as well and eternal life. Okay, so it's up to you, you know, to or up to us to accept all that Christ has for us. But there's going to become a day when those opportunities are going to be taken away. And Christ is going to say, he that is just, let him be just still. And he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. Okay, but right now, while opportunity is still knocking on our door, let us answer it and let Christ into all. You don't have to try to figure it out. You can come just as you are. Christ is going to do the work for you. When he needs your input or your cooperation, he'll let you know. But for the most part, just come because Christ knows the difference while we're getting settled in him and we're slipping and sliding and we're still doing our sin and it appears that 
life is still the same. A heart is not. And Christ knows the difference to, about a heart that is geared towards him. That now, while we're still sinning, you know, and we can't really stop. You know, then a life that we're living a life and we don't care about us offending him. We don't care about disobedience. We don't care. He knows the difference. And so even though we slip and slide and still sin it, it's our heart, our heart postures. Is it towards Christ? So let us direct our hearts, our minds, our bodies, our souls, our photo centers, our frontal lobes, our, our imaginations and everything. Let it be directed towards Christ. Okay. And so anyway, um, all right, I'll just make sure I said anything. All right, and so anyway, so let us move on to um, rest and worship Saturday. Now, so anyway, so while a lot of people worship on Sunday, um, back in the day, the, the Roman Catholic Church persecuted uh, a lot of people um, doing that. I think it was the, the Protestant Reformation. Uh, a lot of people were persecuted and made to keep Sunday because, you know, the Roman Catholic Church said this is when Christ rose. And so therefore we should keep this day. But the Bible says in Hebrews, the, I believe it's the fourth chapter, verses one to 11. If Jesus had given us another day, he would have let us know. And then it says there remains a day of rest for the people of God. And then Isaiah 66, 23, it tells us that. When Christ should come, when a new moon and the old, you know, from one new moon to another, from one um, Sabbath to another, that we should all come together to worship God. And so I know that in relationship to the Sabbath, that it's not so readily appear that it's a day of worship, like us going to church. It's a day to go to church. But the Bible says that Jesus himself, it was his custom to go to the church, go to church on a Sabbath. Okay, and so as his followers, we need to make that correction, you know, uh, because the Bible says to remember the Sabbath, the seventh day of the week. Okay, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Six days shall I labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it, thou should not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the seas and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed. Now that's the part right there. Blessed and hallowed, that's church, y'all. That's go to church, okay? So anyway... Um, let's just move on to the last one. No, the last two. And that's Re Resurrection Sunday. We're basically in Resurrection Sunday. We take care of ourselves. In appreciation to um, appreciation for Christ dying on the cross for us. Okay, all that suffering that he did. And so basically, because we belong to him, because he he, he cast his love and her, her care, his care on us, then we have to like care for ourselves. And right now, I put myself in a diabetes program, even though I don't have diabetes, but I qualify because I weighed a little bit too much. And so basically, you know that I developed binge eating um, disorder as a result of being forced to eat. Now, I forgive. I know that I my mother didn't mean any harm and, you know, what she was doing and whatever. She thought that she was doing the best, but I ended up with bench eating disease, um, which basically you eat large, eat the large amount of food. Some people vomit and all that kind of stuff to keep, stay small. With me, I would fast. I would do like the first week in every month, but I look bony. I look puny. So this time in my life, being in a diabetes program, I am exercising. I am learning more about food. And it comes at a great time in my life because, you know, basically I had a consultation with one of the, um, um, the people that's a part of the program. And she was basically telling me that when you have a lot of fat in your body, 
that can break off and go to your brain, cause a stroke. It can go to your heart and cause a heart attack. And I'm like, what? So I've been steadily working on it. You know, some of the things that the Lord is blessing me to do is to make sure that I get first thing in the morning. First of all, I'm calling on him for help. Never leave out God for anything. Trusting in him for everything. The next thing I'm doing, I'm giving myself like an inside baptism. Like in the morning, you know, I drink like, I've been drinking like 80 ounces of water. And I know that that sounds like a lot of water, but however, how you do it is I try to drink it within an hour. And so basically, first thing in the morning, I can drink um, about about a, about a quart, really, like a from a pint to a quart. So I drink that and I wait until I can drink some more. Now, after that, I may be only able to drink like a pint, I'm sorry, a cup or a pint, but I drink that. I wait maybe 10 minutes more. And so I just keep on drinking. First of all, I do measure out the water because I heat up some of it. I, I use like the juice of, I squeeze the juice of one lemon at like at the end, like the last cup or two, I squeeze that lemon in there. And I drink that along with like um, three tablespoons. And this is what I do. If you choose to do this, it's not because I said it. This is your own juice. And that's a disclaimer. And so basically I drink that. Um, and that helps with the fat. It helps with like alkaline in my system. And believe it or not, drinking the three tablespoons of the um, organic raw vinegar that has the mothers it helps to fight cancer now i did a research on it and research saying that there's a hormone in that it's not the same as lemon it's a hormone in that organic vinegar that fights cancer and so um and i feel great i have a lot of more energy i've been doing more of my responsibilities all the time pray for me it's still one thing that i'm not really getting to um, hopefully like after Christmas or the new year, I can really get to it. So pray for me concerning that. So this is a part of taking care of myself. Comment down below an area that you are working on that maybe you were brought into, you know, maybe you smoke because your mother smoked or you curse, you know, the, and I didn't see this before, but you know, I saw in the part where the Bible says, oh, you, you cursing? Well, you're going to bring curses on yourself. So even with that profanity, at what point did you see in the Bible where Christ and all that he experienced that he cursed? You know, because when I think about things that I should curse for, and I was a curser. And the reason why I was a curser, because I was small and I wanted to keep people up off of me. You know, so it appeared that I was violent and that I was bad because I would curse. But in reality, I was afraid. And that's why I curse. And I'm not saying that's why you curse if you curse. You know, but it's just that um, God is calling us to a higher standard. And so in the way that we represent him is how we look and how we speak. And the first thing that a person knows that we are Christian and that we may be somebody that they can listen to, that can influence, that they can help them along the way is how we talk. And so cast it all, cast it before the throne of Christ so that he can give us something different. You know, as, as far as the profanity. And I don't think nobody liked cursing more than I did. Because I said, if you can say something and it sounds wonderful, it sounds wonderful, even better with a little profanity, you know. But however, God has blessed me. He's changed my heart and my mind about profanity. And so um, that's something that he stripped away from me. And to a degree, I'm still cursing and within myself about what's happened to my daughter being being raped. I'm still cussing about that. And God is working with me. I have to be honest with y'all. God is working with me, you know, on that. Um, it'll change. Things will change and things will get better. So let's move on because it's really taking up more time than what I wanted. So, okay. So uh, me rejuvenating Monday. Um, it's been a long road, y'all. It's been a long road because, you know, I tried to do the adult thing. Um, me rejuvenating Monday is basically, it's like a day where I take to myself. And it's basically because I believe that Monday should be optional. I'm not really ready to get into the work week or anything like that. You know, I'm basically um, still on a weekend. 
you know. But however, in taking that time, usually I take it like a time to take care of bills, um, maybe to shop for something that I may need in the house, you know, maybe to wash clothes because usually I try to be done washing clothes by like Wednesday. And that's only on the days where I need to wash clothes. You know what I'm saying? You know, if I got enough clothes to wash. But however, it's like when I do those things, because believe it or not, when you come into obeying God and keeping the seventh day Sabbath, which is Saturday today, um, you will find that Sunday becomes an extra day. Like you got a whole extra day that you can still enjoy your weekend. And that's one of the awesome things about um, worshiping and going to church on a Saturday. You know, that's one of the things that I really like. But however, um, God has brought me a mighty long way, you know, from the confusion from, you know, trying to figure out what was the problem and with my parents not being together, everything that came with that. Um, thinking that I'm bad because maybe I got a whooping or something. Um, well, I didn't think I was bad from getting just a regular whipping. I think I, I thought I was bad because when it was harsh, when the, 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 the punishment or beating was harsh, that's when I, I looked at it. I, I internalized it like I was bad. You know, not that I need to correct and that this correcting was a part of love. Not that part, but the harsh part of it. And also the confusion that came with like, like being raped. You know, it's like God can use all that stuff because really, if we don't change our way, what ends up happening is that you could be able to relate too much to your child. Because if you like fornication and you like adultery, okay, um... It would be a situation where we don't really understand it too well, or we don't really see it as wrong until it happens to your child. Let's just say that because of adultery or because of fornication or whatever, your child is in a, in a, in a bed with, say, uh, another man's wife, and they get the head blown off. Then we understand, oh, shoot, fornication and adultery is really is dangerous. Okay, so it's a lot, it's a lot with that. And then sometimes good, bad things happen to good people. It can just not be a situation where that a person did something, you know, it could be just simply for the glory of God, you know, um, but whatever, everything that happens on this earth, it happens because of Satan and that this is planet earth. But however, we're looking toward another home where the building everything is of god no more partiality no more marginalization no more ostracization no more meanness no more sin no more death no more killing no more rape none of that stuff you know and so basically if that is what you were interested in which i am interested in for you except christ he will lead you in the way that he will go. So whether you are, wherever you are, when he comes, he would know whether you're serious or whether you're not, you know? And so we're not going to do things perfectly on the earth, but that don't mean that we don't try. That doesn't mean that we don't try. We are still to try. And even all the confusions about, um, you know, like say my parenting, like not doing things like perfectly, well, there's a level of healing that we have, a level of knowledge that we have that we can't do anything about that. But however, everything that we weren't able to do, it can be completed in God. Sometimes what happens, a lot of times what happens is that when we experience things that are not right, our development arrests. But however, when we accept Christ in, that development is completed. You know, and so we get to the point to where when we flip flop going back from the wrong to the right and the wrong to the right, we would get to the point to where Christ would strengthen us in the way that we want to go towards him. Satan in his way would be diluted. And as a result, he would establish us and we become a light on the hill. 
okay? We become salt in the earth and we do this for Christ, okay? And so let us be encouraged that whatever it is that we're going through, you know, a bad relationship, whatever it is, just know we deserve God's best. And it may be time for us to say yes to the Lord. It may be time. You know, it could be that when I looked at my relationships with guys and going from one guy to another, the name changed and the person is the same. That's dumb. That's stupid. I'm saying, not me or not you, stupid. That right there, you know, being with somebody, the same old person, abusive, mentally, physically, spiritually, it's time to let go and let God, let God in, you know, so that we can have the life, the abundant life that he has for us, you know. So basically, y'all, this is all I have for you. I know that I kept you a long time and I apologize for that. So as time go on, so this was a big one because we really had to pause. Let me ask you this. Do you feel your need from Christ? When I talked about like all the things that we, the negative things that we ex experience on the earth. Can you understand why Christ had to come and why he had to come as a baby? Because some of us was, some of us was violated as babies. Some as toddlers, some as preschoolers, all the way up things has happened. So Christ had to come all the way where maybe things started for some in the womb. And when I say in a womb, some parents smoked and drank when they was pregnant. Just a whole lot of different things. Maybe, maybe uh, the, the father did drugs or whatever the situation. Christ had to come just the way that he came. But the Bible is saying for us to come to him, to bring the, the little child in us. You know, now Christ was talking about the children was around. But we can also look at it as the children inside of us that's been hurt. To bring that child to Christ. And as we bring them, you know, where we were split. You know, we live a double life. We got the life as an adult. We're adulting, but it's not in godliness. And we got the life of, of when we were children, you know, and all the things that impact our lives. The, you know, the rape, the, the bad examples, you know, where um, vicariously we learned how to smoke and how to drink and how to have sex and all those different things that is not about godliness. The Bible says that, and this is my last point, the ungodly will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. So if you're thinking that you can hold on to a little or something for yourself, give it all up. Give it all up to Christ. Listen, I love you. Remember to share to YouTube, okay? I appreciate you. Thank you for staying with me this long. Um, I'll see you in the next YouTube. Now to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding good, with exceeding, I forgot, with exceeding, I hate that when I do that. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and ever. I love you. See you in the next YouTube.